Abraham was convicted of murder at 11 years old. He was back in court today. On Monday, he was accused of exposing himself to a Pontiac woman. On Wednesday, he ran from police and was accused of assaulting an officer. Abraham, just this afternoon, appearing before a judge. Police say he was selling drugs in Farmington Hills and Pontiac. It is just the latest in a long list of troubles for Abraham since he was convicted as a child back in 1997. Nathaniel Abraham has spent more than half his life incarcerated, first in a juvenile detention facility and later in an adult prison. Those who know and care for Abraham have described him as a trouble but also bright and engaging and says his problems stem from youthful mistakes and being branded with a reputation he may carry for a lifetime. Those who investigated, prosecuted, and monitored Abraham describes him as someone who does whatever he pleases and believes he is a celebrity after being courted by the likes of Oprah Winfrey. Abraham's choices continue to dog him and many, including a judge and former attorneys, question whether efforts to help him will ultimately be for naught. He killed my brother, said Nicole Edwards, sister of Ronnie Green, who died in October 1997 from a 22 rifle shot fired by Abraham. I did know of trouble he got in recently, but it is truly, truly hard on me and my family. It's like a bad nightmare that never ends. One of his promises when he first got out at uh, 21, that he planned to go out and talk and mentor young people. We all feel we've been lied to, said Edwards, who agreed to appear with him on Oprah after his release from juvenile detention facility in 2007. By 11, investigators said Abraham had already had at least 22 police contacts for arson, assaults, breaking in thefts, and threatening children and adults alike with a steel pipe. While serving his first sentence at Maxie Training School, a facility for juveniles, Abraham obtained a GED but also got into trouble for threatening other inmates. A few months after being paroled, he was picked up for possession of a large supply of ecstasy in May 2008. A short time after his return to prison, he was convicted of assaulting two guards in late 2010. And this summer, within a few weeks of completing parole, he was accused of indecent exposure and subsequently fell to show up to a court date. That led to a fist fight with deputies who tried to arrest him on the street and used a stun gun to subdue Abraham. He was taken to the Oakland County Jail and later placed in the isolation cell after multiple warnings for exposing himself to other prisoners and trustees, according to the sheriff's office. Abraham has summed up his life until now as making mistakes and listening to the wrong people. As a child, he claimed he made youthful errors, errors of judgment, like shooting weapons at targets in the neighborhood, but was committed to changing his behavior. As an adult, he claimed to sometimes react to hostile forces around him including prison guards and cops. He recently admitted in court that he needs counseling and psychiatric help. He doesn't want to go back to prison, back into the belly of the beast, as attorney stated, James L. Gallen Jr. Told the judge at a recent hearing for his August 8th arrest, and remember y'all, this is predated. Gallen believes the indecent exposure charge will be disproved at a district court trial. Um, he said Abraham's confrontation with plainclothes deputies stem from fear and his client's misunderstanding of when he needed to surrender himself for court. Attorneys, uh, Mayor Magaroff, who assisted in Abraham's trial for Green's death, called his former client's uh, present situation a shame. I think going away at a young age changed his life forever. Whose high profile clients have included assisted suicide advocate Jack uh, Kevorkian and auto executive turn alleged drug dealer uh, John DeLorne. Being in a place like that, I think we all know there's really no rehabilitation and more bad habits learned. I visited him many, many times to try and give him assistance, Magaroff said. I also had the impression he was just a kid. He didn't understand what was going on or what he had done. Brian York, the police officer who arrested Abraham for green slaying, said he encountered a seemingly confused 11-year-old when he first questioned him October 31st, 1997. But York also said Abraham was quick with explanations we went to a junior high school where he was dressed up uh like abraham lincoln with a top hat and uh, a white beard for a halloween party recall york not retired he was taken out of class and we went to a room and later to the police station uh to discuss green shooting with his mother present he played innocent at first he didn't know anything about it york said then he said he might have been in the the field when another kid did it and named another boy who he said was responsible when I asked him why his fingerprints were the only ones on the rifle he said it must have happened when he had shot at a tree branch and missed the 22 caliber rifle had been stolen in a neighborhood burglary the rifle stock had been chopped down by Abraham York believes to shorten the weapon 
making it easier for a small person to grasp. York said Abraham's mother came to the police station thinking officers were questioning her um, son about another weapon, a shotgun that she had called police to remove from her home a week earlier. She was shot, recalled York. The Abraham uh, story was emotional for a lot of people because of his age, said York, who retired from the since this man Pontiac Police Department. He and the victim didn't even know each other. It was random. There was more York recall. Abraham was picked up for stealing uh, trick-or-treat candy from younger kids at a city-sponsored harvest festival the night after the shooting. He liked to use a teddy bear for uh, target practice, said York. We found it in the driveway at his home with bullets in it. He had lost interest in, in shooting branches and street signs and teddy bears. Abraham was convicted of second degree murder and Green's death and spent nearly a decade in the juvenile detention facility. That's more time than some get, York said. Unfortunately, he didn't do what he should have to get out of Pontiac. When he got out, he began associating with dopers and drug dealers. And not long after that, he went down again. In May 2008, 18 months after um, release from prison for Green's death, Abraham was arrested in Pontiac with 254 ecstasy pills and a liquor bottle bag. In January 2009, as Abraham faced sentencing for possession of drugs with intent to deliver, defense attorney Brian Pitts reminded Oakland Circuit Judge Daniel O'Brien how his client had been incarcerated before becoming a teenager. He asked if uh, a sentence around 36 months, the chance at life that you know and I know, and almost any of these other people in the room have known are completely different from his circumstances, Pitts told the judge. Assistant Prosecutor Beth Hand requested 60 months, noting that just 18 months had elapsed from Abraham's release uh, to the drug offense. He is not going to do anything and doesn't want to do. And that behavior is continued while he was incarcerated in Oakland County Jail. Hand told the judge he basically thinks he is some type of celebrity or doesn't have to abide to the same rules and conditions that other people do. O'Brien sentenced Abraham to 4 to 20 years with credit for 146 days time served. Abraham was released from prison in June 2017. Pitt said he hasn't had contact with Abraham in several years and could not comment on his current situation. He said for some young offenders, sentences serve to acclimate offenders to prison environment rather than the outside world. It is my opinion that lengthy sentences, especially for young offenders, are not effective if you are hoping to return someone as a law-abiding member of society, he said, an offender can spend too much t time learning from the wrong people and come back and commit uh, more crimes. Galen said he felt good about buying his client out of jail this past week, but was not celebrating. He said he has advised Abraham not to leave the house except to go to work. A former employer has offered him work, said Galen, who did not elaborate. I think it is in his best interest to stay home with his mother and not be out in the community. Besides family, Abraham has found numerous supporters over the years like John Cromer, who described himself as a mentor who has known him since 2007. When he got out, I helped him enroll in school, get a job, a car, and pay for his apartment for a year, Cromer said. He is an intelligent and gifted writer, and his songs and writings speak of his pain. He's been through enough punishment and what he needs more than anything now is support to help him make it on the outside he said Cromer said Abraham initially told supporters police had planted drugs on him in May 2008 he later pleaded guilty to the offense but I don't believe that indecent exposure charge for a minute said Cromer that's not like him and I don't believe he would do anything like that another supporter Samara Willis said she also had known Abraham for over 10 years and believed he deserved support. As for Abraham's personal life, Willis said he is writing a book that will elaborate on his experiences. The idea that Abraham might write a book that would likely include information from her late brother Green rankles the victim's sister. Edwards, who also read rumors of such a project on social media, I miss Ronnie every day, she said there's no way. Uh, we are going to allow him to profit from his death in any way. Up, though. You already know how it go. Make sure you smash, like, subscribe, comment. I don't care what you comment as long as you comment. You did. I'm here today. I want to speak on Nathaniel Abraham. I showed y'all a few clips. I barely got through reading that. <laughs> I, I need to work on my, like, reading in a microphone type of thing. But it's going to get better. As long as you hear, you heard what I said, the message I was trying to convey, the story that I read for y'all. Um... Let, let, let's talk let's talk about this uh nathaniel abraham at the age of 11 he was breaking in places um stealing carrying guns and 
whoever was in his community and doing that with him, I don't know if he just picked that up by himself at 11 years old. I really don't know. But whoever he was doing it with that was older, shame on you, especially if you, you were an adult. We'll find out soon when we talk to him. I spoke to him a few times on uh, JPay. We'll find out more about his early childhood because a lot is unknown. But his behavior, you got to blame that on his mom a bit too. He should have been getting a lot of psychiatric help at that at, at that moment. When you're doing that at 10 and 11 years old, you going that you that deep off into the game with no real goals or purpose of why you commit these crimes. That's crazy. Um, I was talking to somebody about this, uh, a therapist, and she had said that he's a sociopath. Uh, do I believe that when I look at what sociopath mean? All the videos that I watched on it, do I think he's a young sociopath? Yeah. Do I think he's a psychopath? Nah, but who am I to clinically diagnose somebody with, with something? I'm just saying he shows the trace of it. And all of us got some of those traits, but he showed a lot of trace of it through his behavior and his crimes at the time. I mean, you're shooting teddy bears branches off trees at 11 years old and then unfortunately he ends up killing a man that's cr that he was believed to be the youngest uh killer in the in the history of the united states we know that's probably not true but <clears throat> damn near close uh like i said i blame a lot of that on his mother like he should have been somewhere like really 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 getting some help you did them to my, and I wish I would have got the right type of help when I was younger, so I didn't experience some of the things I experienced. You feel me? Um, he get locked up, so you hold him in jail from 11 to 22. A kid, uh, excuse me, 21. A kid with all types of problems. 10 years of his life, from 11 to 21. And I think y'all think when he, they go to these places, it's a bunch of reform. It's a bunch of great stuff going on. You paying. He was at Maxie's. They, 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 at that time, they was probably making, well, let's just say when I, when I was in juvie, uh, 2007 when I went, at Maxie's, they, they, they were probably paying $12 an hour, $13 an hour. I think minimum wage was like eight fifty. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, excuse me, it was like seven fifty at that time. So they paying them uh, 11 12 15 so You're not getting the best of the best there. Then you got one therapist to 20 children or 30 children. You feel me? Like, they not really getting no real work there. And, and a lot of those therapists just come there for a check, do enough to write down notes in their books and, and show the bosses. It's not a bunch of corrective stuff going there. And then no telling what he experienced while he was there. Like I told y'all, juvenile, it ain't just prison. Juvenile too, people get R. Yeah, people get R there. You feel me? So you never know what might have happened to him. And then he didn't have intimacy with a woman for years a decade now it's been rumors that he might have been doing stuff in there with other little kids i don't know i can't say that that's true i only can speak on what the prison environment was and you know what they say and you know i hope i hope, I hope you don't get me i'm just doing my doing my thing man i'm just telling what i feel what i've seen in my experiences um so you so you lock them up for 10 years 10 years, no real affection. Guards can't uh, uh, hug you, no women there. What you got left? The, uh, the inmates and, uh, and a lot of them still closeted. So they don't want, you know, they're not going to be doing that stuff. And it's real hard to get away with that type of stuff in there because you're on a small rock where you watch all day by one or two people. You did what I'm talking about. And Maxi was a very violent place. And they said very, very violent. That was worse than uh, Wolverine. You feel me? Like, that that was with rent. That was that's pre-prison. That's just preparing you to go to prison. That's all it is, right? But you know, at a, and in eleven, you can't really get to help you. You can't really circumscribe what's going on with you. You don't even think you got mental health problems. A lot of us don't think we got mental health problems. So how can you really seek help and, and know what's going on? That's I didn't take my therapy seriously when I was a kid because I didn't think I had no problems. I thought it was just my parents. You dig what I'm talking about? And I didn't want to be labeled crazy and all that, so I didn't disclose a lot of information. So you got that. Um, he get out. Shortly later, he get caught with the ecstasy, running from the police, fighting the police. Definitely some mental health issues going on there, some undiagnosed trauma. Um, the de indecent exposure. Do I believe he did it? Yeah, for sure. He's a whip rider. Yeah, he 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 whips out. You feel me? I was up, up, up the way with him, Chippewa. 
Uh, yeah, he's a whip rider. Um, he also, and, and, and see, the, and that goes back to, let me say this, this goes back to no real intimacy. What do you have? It psychologically drives you crazy. So you in prison all these years, yes, they start whipping out and exposing themselves to nurses walking past, other inmates, guards. That's what they do, right? And then um, I, had, I had asked somebody one day, I'll say, why, why do you do that? Like, what do you get from that? I, I just couldn't fathom how pulling your penis out on a woman makes you excited and gets you off. Like, that's, that's damn near rape to me, right? Oh. And a dude told me, he's like, man, it's the closest thing to sliced bread. It's the, or the best thing since sliced bread or something he said. And uh, another guy like, yeah, bro, you man, I'm telling you, bro. So I, I ain't going to lie. I sat up and thought about it. I was like, when the nurse walked past, I'm going to see what the adrenaline rush I get out of this. But then I, I couldn't do it. I'm like, bro, this is weird. They had me convinced to the point, like, damn, this might be the best thing ever. And I seen how the women would look at them and shake their head and walk away from their rock. I said, no, 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 no. Last thing I need is more rejection in prison. You feel me? More not being able to talk to a woman. She shoot right past my door. So fortunately, I never did that. Never will. Um, he was involved with some guys up there, some real serious guys, and ended up getting his face cut because, I, and I'm not going to go into details of why, but some of his behaviors were unbecoming of uh, the Lord's. You feel me? It was unbecoming. We ain't going to go into why. None of that stuff, but it was unbecoming. You feel me? Uh, that's more trauma. By yourself. Here you go. In prison again and again and again and again. You can even see in his jail video. They, they, clearly something going on around there. Then you might, it, it might be drugs involved. You lock these kids up for decades. And think you, you sending back out reformed citizens. Very rarely. That's why the recidivism rate was 77% for so long. They say, it's, I think it's down to 71. Like, bro, if it's not under 50, it's not really working. If over half the population returns to prison because you're not giving them no real trades, no real education, no job skills. It's, I've been in places where they don't teach you how to do interviews. You know, I know people like, oh, man, a 30-year-old man getting out of prison, he should know. If he's been locked up since 15, how does he know how to get a job? How, how does he know how to behave in these type of environments? You, you, you know, where you got to go mingle with people and socialize. They don't know. And I'm not making excuses for them. I'm just saying this is what it is. The reform system has to really start reforming at some point. And I want y'all to think about this. A lot of these people, they're not locking up and throwing away the key. These are guys that have been art molested, which are the same thing. These guys have been beat by their parents, verbally abused, abandoned, group home to group home, fight after fight, uh, disrespect from all types of guards in these facilities, these these boys' homes, the, I'm about not the criminal boys' homes, but the ones where you go where, for abuse and neglect. These some real damaged, messed up individuals to grow up with. What you think you're going to learn in that environment? You're going to learn how to survive and blend in, and you're going to pick up some of those habits. So you, you got a kid that been through all this unhealed trauma, no therapy, getting back out here into society after doing years, going to learn from the criminals. That might be your daughter one day in that bins coming from one of them Tiger Gangs, Gretchen, and he decided to blow, blow her for uh, that bins or that watch or, or that chain or them buffs. These are the same people we sending back out here into society. So you better start thinking about that for real, for real. These are people that's going to be living next door to you. So whatever I can do, whatever I can use the platform for, let me know how we can go to legislation, get some laws changed, get some outdoor rec for these kids. Whatever y'all want to do, I'm with it. I got some ideas. All I need to do, all I need to do is find out how to 